Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Hey, good morning, everyone. Well, um, this is kind of what the process is like as of right now. I go out to an estate, buy a whole truckload of stuff, process it in the garage, and it goes out to auction. I have purchased all kinds of things in the last little bit, which will be making their way into their new homes before too long, but I still have several boxes left to go through. Uh, they came from an estate the other day. Today, we're gonna do that. We're gonna go through the boxes, hopefully, um, I made some good buys, so I guess we'll see. I guess we'll find out and uh, discover some treasures. So follow along on today's episode while we do a little antique discovery, a little unboxing, and, uh, and I get my garage back, hopefully. <laughs> Stay tuned. Okay, first things first, I have a box full of tins. So they're candy tins, biscuit tins, tea tins, and I'm, going, I'm hoping most of these have a little bit of age to them because the older tins have really great graphics on them. The colors are nice. Um, they're a little bit more on the collectible side. You can still get candies and things like that in tins, but they're not um, as collectible, at least not yet anyway. That's kind of a nice one. It has the cats on it. Made in England. Somebody who's a cat lover will probably think that's cool. I'll probably put out the more interesting tins individually and maybe a lot together. Oh wait, hang on. Something in that one. Oh look! Ha 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 ha. Jello coins and sheriff pudding coins and salada food coins. These are little plastic premiums that uh, came in food around the 1960s to try and encourage people to buy them and then collect the stuff inside. I actually um, used to have a good collection of these, but when you find the, it's the hockey ones that have, you know, Hall of Famers on them that can really get expensive, that's a nice surprise. I'm gonna go through that later to see who I got. There's a pretty tea tin. Jaya Garden Tea. There's really neat graphics on that. Yeah, that's a better one. And this, this will be one of the best. Anything Hudson's Bay is a little bit more desirable um, because the uh, Hudson Bay, of course, being a historic company, um, people really like to collect HBC stuff, at least around here in Canada anyway. So that, that type of tin might have a, more of a premium on it than a, than a regular tin. Oh, let's see. Body, Watkins body powder. I thought that was going to be a replica, but no, it's an original. Very pretty sort of Art Nouveau style tin. There we go. You get a good view of that. She's got her parasol. Very uh, Monet-esque kind of vibe going on there. Very pastel and floral. Let's see what else. This one's in a little bit worse shape. Would have been kind of a neat tin with the elephant on it, but... It's a little worse for wear. Right, let's see. What made it into the plastic bag? Nabob. Another T10. And what's this? Oh, King George V. Well, that's going back a few years. And Queen Mary. Australia. So it's kind of like a uh, colonial. There's the Prince of Wales right there on the back. That's going to be an early tin. That George V on it, you know, you're going back a few years. Ridgeways Tees, England. Cool, that's another neat one. Put that over in the, this is my neat pile. My, my stuff of, my, my neat stuff is over there. And then that's just sort of a generic. See, this is like less valuable. Trafalgar Square, I don't know. It's from the 60s probably, or 70s. Not as desirable, but still cool. So I'll probably put a few of these tins in the box here. Like I said, we'll just make a sorted lot of vintage tea tins. 
and the ones that are uh, a little bit more exceptional or cool can go separately. I still have a few more boxes to go though. We've got, this is um, an old store display. It's uh, Hickok, which made um, cufflings and tie clips and things like that. Kind of a neat thing. I mean, if you, if you wanted to stick it even on your bedside and make it look all fancy, you could put like your watch and your cufflings and stuff there. And when you want to use it, just pull the tray out. A neat way of displaying your stuff in a nice little wooden case. Oh, this is a pretty full box. I might bring these boxes inside to go through because I don't need a place to uh, lay them all out. Before I pack some of the boxes upstairs to finish sorting through, I did want to show you a couple things I've got out here. This is a massive tin. The reason this tin is so big is it's a uh, cake chest. You'd actually put your cakes inside of it, Shep's Cakes. You'd buy this. Um, it's definitely a nice antique piece. It's about, um, you know, almost two foot across and a foot and a half wide. It's a really, really neat piece. If it were in mint condition, they go for up to $700. This one in that in that shape is still probably like a $300 tin. I'll just see if I can reach inside and get that uh, dent up out of the top there. See, it's got a little push. Somebody put something heavy on there. Nice about tin. Is it popped up pretty easy? <laughs> that was noisy for the people at home. I'll work on a little bit more and see if I can get the rest of that dent out, but really cool piece. And of course, it's always fun to find a stack of comics, especially when the comics go back as far. Now that one's not as old. That's a uh, Spire Christian comic where they uh, actually had the rights to use Archie for a while. I was gonna set one of these records down here so I can put these on. But these are older. 10 cent comic, that'll go back to the 1950s. In fact, when you look at a comic book, it'll say right there, 1957. So nice early Archie comics. Big Archie's seventh annual edition, uh, Woody the Woodpecker, Annie Oakley. All of these are just excellent early comics. That might be 1940s even. Let's see, 1947, very early Bugs Bunny comic books. And the, the covers on the really early books are, um, they're not as glossy. They're more of a papery feeling material. Lots of Disney stuff. Story of Ruth, Alice in Wonderland, Classics Illustrated, Buzzy. There's a lot of competition for Archie genre back in the day. Oh, there's Roy Rogers, number nine. My dad, of course, a big Roy Rogers fan back in the day. Martin and Lewis. It's not as often you come across 1940s and 50s comic books. It's a shame that there's no superhero stuff in here because that's where the real money is, but these will still sell well, I'm sure, at auction. And this um, book set that we've got here, it's a whole series of Charles Dickens books, but they date back to the 1800s. This, this set came out, I think, around 1869, and I believe I have the full, the full set. Look, uh, it was gifted... 1893, August 18th, 1893. But this set, I believe, is a little bit older, but this is a complete set of 1800s Charles Dickens books. Of course, um, the originals came out um, not much before that. So these would be like, you know, probably second or third printings on some of these books. Really early stuff, really important book set. Nice thing to find. Okay, I, I took the first batch of stuff to the auction house already, actually. It was um, a pretty good sized load. We've already got, you now we're doing sort of a, as I am filming this, we're doing like our final auction sale for the store. And we're gearing up for a second auction sale in June for the, I guess, sort of the leftover things and the things I had in the garage and other stuff I've been buying. And I've already got, I think, 300 things and I'm not even close to being done yet. So it'll probably be another big sale for June too. Um, I'm gonna go back in, start organizing, start, um, well, I guess continue organizing, I shouldn't say start, but I wanna get the stuff out of the house soon. I wanna get the stuff that I was going through and showing you a second ago done right away because we're moving in like a couple weeks. So uh, why would I move it to the new house only to have to move it to the auction? I may as well get it all done now, move it to the auction, get the garage more or less cleaned up and be less stuff to deal with. So back to the house, 
we'll go digging through those other boxes and see what else is inside. About to go through boxes. Chewy is equally as interested, aren't you? <laughs> What's going on, Chewy? What's happening? I am going to start with this box. It's mainly books. We'll see what we have. Collier's New Photographic History of the World's War. Now, this World War was the First World War. Published in 1918. It's basically a whole photographic history of the events throughout the duration of the war. Really, really neat piece. Not often found. Pretty cool item. Child's picture book. This looks like an oldie. I'm going to guess it's from maybe the early 1900s. Some great pictures in here. Fanciful colored pictures. Oh, and little stories. The three little kittens, they found their mittens. It makes you wonder, well, I wonder when the first time that uh, these little nursery rhyme sort of stories were, nursery stories were told and how early this book is, you know, if it's the first time or one of the first times that people would have seen some of these images. I mean, those are just cool. There's a really nice artwork in this book. I'll have to see, there's no uh, plate that tells me the exact age of it, so I'll look it up and see if I can get an idea. The old woman in a basket, I haven't heard that one. There was an old woman who had a large broom. She sat in the basket to sweep a small room. It almost sounds like the, uh, there was an old lady who lived in a shoe. I guess they had old ladies who lived in a lot of weird things. Shoes, baskets, maybe housing was a problem for seniors back then. And they just turned, instead of addressing the problem, they just turned into little nursery stories. <laughs> anyway, that's a pretty cool one. This book, even though the condition's not great, I mean, you have to think about how many children this has been passed through, and we all know how careful children can be. It's just a disintegrated piece of paper right there. I guess it's part of the, one of the pictures. Well, I'll have to look this one up and see. Child's picture book. See what the age of that is, but I'm guessing quite early. Well, I put the camera down for a minute and I did some research online and I can't find it. I can't find another copy of that book, not anywhere. So I guess I'll have to really spend some time trying to figure that one out. Okay, let's keep digging through. We've got a very early hockey game, a Somerville game made in Canada. Very simple, like 19... Judging by the fact there's no helmet there, it's going to be pre-war, probably 30s or 40s, probably 40s. I'm guessing same age as the comic books. Kind of neat. We have Jerome. Idle Thoughts of an Idle Fellow. Another nice early book. And uh, 1892. There we go. Condition's quite good on that one. We've got a, a number of books here. And the old children's books in Wood's Natural History. To Margaret from Daddy and Mother. You can always tell from the penmanship that that's quite early, probably late 1800s. We'll see if there's a uh, plate in here that gives us the, the exact age. No, perhaps not, but we have some really great images in here. Imagine how fanciful this would have seemed for a young child on the prairies who would never likely have a hope of seeing some of these animals to see them in a book like this for the first time. Pretty unique. This looks like it was a uh, nicely kept book. The pages are all decent and there's almost uh, these plated pictures on every single page. Just love the graphics on that. Wood's natural history. I'll put the children books all together in a pile. Let's see. Funny Farm Friends at Home. Little kids' storybooks. Just not every day that I come across the really old stuff. Look at this. A Day with Our Gang. And that was the Our Gang um, movies. Or <laughs> with, let's see, Joe Cobb, Hopkins, Harry. That's an early promotional piece. Yeah, from the 1920s. Oh, isn't 
Isn't that something? 1929, Whitman Publishing Company. Simple Simon. There is something just really nice. This was Glasgow, uh, Scotland. But there's something nice about the, uh, there's a charm about early kids' books. It just, you know, the way they were drawn and the way that they were assembled is just really, really nice. Bali and Java. Very simple and early book on traveling to Bali and Java. Presented by the Java China Amsterdam. Oh, I guess maybe it was, maybe you got it when you were on the ship. Maybe this was something like a touristy sort of piece you could pick up on the ship. Looks like it's, uh, I see some of the dates on these prints are dated uh, 37. You would think it's probably 1937. Cool. Uncle Remus stories. Well, there's one that you'll probably never see in print again. A lot of these uh, early books like this are no longer uh, politically correct, like the Tar Baby and the whole Uncle Remus line. So a book like that will probably not be seen again. What year is this thing from? Original copyright 1880, and they were still publishing it by 1934. They got their money's worth out of that uh, copyright, didn't they? Let's see. Illustrated London News of the Queen's coronation in 1953. Look how young she was there. And as I'm filming this right now, she is still on the throne. I think the, one of the longest reigning monarchs. There's the throne. You know what? I would not want that job. I would not want to be a figurehead like that. You just couldn't be yourself. What if she wanted to go play hopscotch when she was a kid? Probably wasn't allowed to go do that kind of stuff. No, thanks. A neat piece of history, though. Alberta. Or a little Alberta advertisement book. All the things you could do in my area at the time. You could farm. Uh, you could go look at your animals in a field. <laughs> you could go into town and look at even bigger animals. Uh, awful lot to do. Come to Alberta. <laughs> my family did. Firestone Roadmaps. What's interesting is sometimes you'll find an old Michelin roadmap and, and uh, restaurant guide. The Michelin five-star rating actually came out of little booklets like this. Michelin Tires uh, put together maps to try and encourage people to go and travel all around. And they would give ratings of what the restaurants were like. And that created the Michelin five-star rating. Just like this Firestone little map is here. But if you can imagine if it had ratings of restaurants, that's pretty much the only difference. Dyson Service Limited next to the New Empire Theater. Oh, that's a nice early map, 1930. If you are, actually, what, what you can do with these old maps, if you look in your area, you can find roads that don't exist anymore and try and trace them down and see if there's old abandoned, you know, towns and other sorts of things. You can have some fun, some adventures. Boy, there's an old Oliver Twist. That is an old book. The People's Nickleby in two volumes. Oh, look, it's advertising one. Uh, the first will be published on June 30th. So this is, I wonder if this is an original Oliver Twist. The Dickens, you say? Yes. Let's see. Well, it's not super old because it's not uh, block printed. Oh, maybe it is actually. We can kind of see the outline of the paper. You know, even in bad shape, sometimes early, early editions or first editions. Let's see. 1865. I don't know if you can see the date there, 1865. I'm so busy like looking at what I'm doing, I'm not paying attention to the camera, but that's an 1865 edition of Oliver Twist. I'm gonna pause the camera now and just look that up and see what the first edition was, when it was from. Okay, well it's not a first edition, it's just a really, really, really early edition. This, uh, the original Oliver Twist came out as a three-part set in 1838. This is from 1856, so it is darn close to the first, though. That is a very, very early printing. The original Oliver Twist, the first edition, could be worth over $10,000.
This, I have no idea what it's worth in that shape, but it, it's going to be collectible. I mean, it's an incredibly popular book, and it's a very early edition. You'd be surprised what some books will sell for. Oh, Memorial to Grey Owl. Love it, Dixon. He's an Englishman who lived as an indigenous person, essentially. And this is basically right after he passed away. I've had several, several books that he wrote that were actually um, signed by him, too. He, at the end of the day, he was a man who loved nature and, and, uh, and wrote about it. Controversial character, a little bit. What do we have here? Chinese checker marbles. Oh, it looks like these are antique marbles that they were probably using for their checker set. But that's a nice little box of antique marbles. Lots of collectors for old marbles, and those are some good ones in there. Early clay marbles are sometimes, they're obviously a bit older than this, but the, it's the glass marbles that carry a bit more value. It's a nice little matchbox full of marbles. No comment on the person I bought them from losing their marbles. <laughs> uh, let's see. This little deck of playing cards with dog image on it. Waddington's Lexington Lexicon card game. The skill of the game of skill, excitement, and interest. So another deck of old cards with the rule book. And it looks like a little bound book. A lot of the stuff in here is much older than what I usually see or get, which is pretty cool. Trans Canada Railway map. So this should be a I'm gonna open this up. Yep, as suspected, it's a pop -it, pocket, not a pop -it. <laughs> It's a pocket map of the Trans-Canada Railway, and it shows you where all the main lines were. But um, if you look, so it says Canadian Pacific there, uh, Canadian Northern, Trans-Canada Railway up at the top. Uh, but there's a line there that says Grand Trunk Railway. Well, Grand Trunk hasn't been around for well over 100 years, so this has got to be quite an old map system. Pretty neat if you collect railroad memorabilia. This is the sort of thing that if you were traveling across country, you might want to carry this with you so you kind of knew where the trains came and went from and where it would take you. Okay, this we have. Ladies Compact with the powder in it. A couple cocktail purses or the little clutches. Beadworks come off on that one a little bit at the top. This one's still in pretty good shape. You wear it with your fancy dress, have it draped over your wrist elegantly. Wouldn't have much in it other than your compact, and I think that's exactly what's... No, there's a little comb in there. So maybe you'd have a little comb or a brush. Where is it made? Made in France. Handmade in France. So it says. Neat little items. And I'll keep digging through. Looks like a little doily or holder for something. Oh, you know what? That's I think that's a little clutch. That's a, a handmade purse, basically. That's why it's uh, silk lined. Very, uh, very delicate. But it's uh, lined with sort of the silk cloth, and then it has this. I thought it was just a doily at first, but that's a little handbag too. Oh, and of course, more books. Let's see. Samantha at Saratoga. I love the the age of these books are just so great. Evangeline. Longfellow, Hawthorne's Tangle Tales, another one, of, and then this might be a couple more of those Idle Thoughts by Jerome, and then, tre oh, Treasure Island, Robert Louis Stevenson, that's a good book, also a great movie by Disney, too, Treasure Island, and look, there's a young Robert Louis Stevenson right there, The Old Buccaneer, neat. Well, that could be a pretty early copy of Treasure Island, too. Anyway, lots of great books. We still have a few more to go. Let's see what else is at the bottom here. The Vicar of Wakefield. This must have been a, a set. That must have been like a little series or something. It looked like they're all, unless somebody had them rebound, but they're all very similar looking. Uh, let's see, what do we have in here? Let me unroll this and see what we have. Looks like a calendar. Yeah, this would have been a calendar for, from the Hudson's Bay Company again. 
Um, somebody's removed the calendar portion off of here. It would have had the date stapled on and they kept the image probably because they thought it was a really cool image. And there seem to be several of these different ages all batched together in here. I've got another bucket full of them basically, like a bin full of them. Let's see what's in the cigar box. We have, oh look, a tiny little roll of tissue. And looks like little uh, tiny doll diapers. <laughs> Somebody's doll accessories. Look at this little little cotton swabs in a jar. Miniature stuff is pretty neat, I must say. Oh yeah, there's a little baby right there with the bottle in the original box. So that a little girl's probably, she kept that in, in that little box just as it, as it is for years and carefully looked at it or played with it. Oh, uh, I see. This this is uh these came out of here. Let's see. So that's the powder. That's the swabs. And there's the tissue. That's a complete little set. Just like mommies. Isn't that cute? Guaranteed by good housekeeping. Well, that's fun. And the bottom of the box, I have what looks like a desk set and for King and Country. To Margaret Moore from Daddy and Mother. Well, at least they bought their kid a lot of books. And this is probably also that late 1800s kind of range, but really, really nice, uh, really nice plates, color plates in here. This would have been a good book. This would have been kind of a, a more of an expensive book, I think. And condition on that's pretty good. Let's see what this desk set looks like here. Currently just a pile of parts to see if I can get it all pieced together and see exactly what I've got here. So these little glass cups go inside there, I believe for your ink, those little glass ink wells. But this really cool dragon theme going on here. Let's see if I can get a better angle of that. There we go. See the head of the dragon? It's kind of like a serpent with its feet there. Another little container with a little lid. That's really kind of nice. It's a nice little, nice little desk set. I don't know if that was hinged at one point. Yeah, it was. The hinge is broken on it. So that would have been hinged. Somebody probably bent it over too far and went back. It's not, uh, it's probably nickel plated pot metal. It wouldn't have been a super expensive set, but it's still pretty cool that it has a dragon theme on it. After spending all that time going through what was in the garage and did just the one box, I didn't even have a chance to go through the second box. I'll have to do that on a separate video because it's packed with even more stuff than was in the first one. But some really great finds. I thought I had a first edition Charles Dickens uh, Oliver Twist. That would have been really cool. But still, you know, um, <laughs> A lot of great stuff from the old toys to the books um, to the tins and the stack of comic books. It was a great find. It took me a while to go through even just that one little bit we went through. So long, in fact, that the dog got bored and took a nap behind me. Uh, but guys, stay tuned for more episodes. I'm going to go through the other box. We're going to see what's in there. Um, and all of this will likely be going through auction or uh, be sold online. Um, you can check us out on Instagram at Curiosity Inc. Y E G, Facebook under Curiosity Inc as well. Um, and we do our auction sales through Kastner Auctions uh, typically every couple months or so. I think this a lot of this stuff will end up in the June sale, uh, June of 2022. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed today's unboxing video. Some neat treasures and uh, stay tuned for more. <laughs> Bye for now.